all I can say to women, stop trusting police. Don't let them flash no badge and say they're police. Peace off, mate. I'm in Brixton today to ask people, do you feel safe? Define that question. Do you guys feel safe at night? No. Do you feel safe at night? No, I drive. Do you think women are safe? No. It depends on what area. Why wouldn't you walk around? It's scary, isn't it? It's not as around. Even during the day, you walk through and you can't walk through a house or a tube without someone making a yeah, comment. Yeah, or a wink. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Especially in this job, you get like a lot of people, guys as well, where they'll kind of like harass you. Yeah. But not like hovering and waiting. Hovering and yeah. waiting. I used to work in hospitality. Did you? Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Until men learn to control themselves and hold each other accountable for their actions, no woman is safe. It's not as if women are harming women at this disproportionate rate. Mm -hmm. This is men harming women. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't ever feel yeah. like I feel the need to come up to a guy and make a comment or wink at them or shout at them yeah, yeah, yeah. in the middle of the street. Like, I don't understand what they're trying to get out of it. Yeah, yeah. Whether they want to intimidate me yeah. and make me feel unsafe, or whether yeah. they actually want to come and chat to me because of things that have happened and how I feel yeah. and how majority, not, not majority, but how some men are. Yeah. Now I have this sort of prejudice against Yeah, all me the men too. I'm like, you have the audacity to speak. Yeah. Have you seen me? Every country has where it is that women are unsafe. So I would say in this country, we're really kind of told that we're on the pinnacle of it's all wonderful. Mm, no. My co-director and I, we run an organisation in Croydon where we talk about consent. And we talk about consent in the black context. And... You know, for a lot of us, I mean, black people have only really owned their own bodies for the last 170 years. Before that, they belonged to white people. A white man could come into a black man's home, take up his wife, rape him and leave, and there was no accountability for it. Come, come on, come on. The reason why women are scared today for them safety is because the policemen make it that way now, because police meant to be safeguarding women, instead they're raping and killing them. Mm -hmm. So in other words, Metropolitan got a lot to do with this, you understand? Because they need to safeguard people rather than trying to destroy people's life. Were you surprised by the fact that it was a copper that killed Sarah Everard? I don't know if I was surprised. Um, obviously, it's... Expecting they were, yeah. like, you, they would, he wouldn't probably got caught if it wasn't... It's disturbing, if anything, yeah. mm. uh, because he hid, obviously, behind the police masks, and which is supposed to make you feel safe. Mm. And then the response that came afterwards mm. was just really insensitive. Yeah. I feel it for her and her family, but at the same time, she was parity over three young boys, one very in Tuesday, one very in coming Tuesday, and her news wasn't finished and it's still going on, and it's the same week that it happened, and you don't hear the news, BBC, you don't hear the government, nobody talking about these young children that died, three young boys. It had to take a white person to die for it to make yeah. a difference. Yeah. Even that, like, in terms of for women at the moment, it hasn't really made a difference. And what do you think about police, the police's involvement in the Sarah Everard case? I'm going to say this much. Since Windrush, black and brown bodies in this country have been talking about the way, male and female, the way the police have treated them. On duty, off duty. And nobody never gave a shit. I remember back in the days in Brixton, there used to be a police named John Wayne, that he used to plant stuff on black men and then arrest them with the same stuff that they, and arrest them and put them in prison. You understand? I was one of those victims. So it's the death of a middle class white woman and all of a sudden, it's a big thing. When for years, We've had deaths in custody, we've had all sorts of things happen to us and nobody believed us, but now it's one of their own. Oh. What do you say to your daughters about their safety? I just keep them with me. What things do you think helped you as a young boy become a respectable young gentleman? I think <laughs> <laughs> you're pushing it. My husband is for a start. Oh. The violence against women, right. we need it to stop and stop right now. Yes. But we also want that TV business we want to have there. I watched Naked Attraction on Saturday night. Right. So what, what is that foolishness? Oh, so you think that has... No, no, no. Look at it properly. Yeah, I know. Naked I've seen Attraction. It. Yeah, yeah. I've what seen it. What are you it. doing? You're inviting trouble in your house. Right. Do you think women are safe at night? Certainly. Why would I not think women is not safe in the night? So over 15 women have died at the hands uh, of, of men this year. And that's why I'm making a video, just to see 
if there is a solution to male violence against women? Well, it's not really male violence, you know, it's violence in general. Because right. a lot of our brothers are yeah. dying every day also. Agreed. As we speak right now, Agreed. there might be five or ten or fifteen young brothers yeah. dying also, Agreed. Agreed. in which the men also are is the pioneers of the future. Do you feel like there is an issue with uh, violence against women? Has that changed? That's not changed. Violence against women hasn't changed. So you feel like it's always been there? Yeah, absolutely. It's about power. Mm. So it's violence in general, sweetheart. But what it's, about male violence? It's, it's not about male violence or female violence. While you talk about how many ladies die? Yeah. How many ladies? Oh, oh, well, it's over 15 have died over in the hands 15. of men. It may be 300 male dies yeah. also. So, but this is male violence though, right? Violence in general is violence. Why would the sister life be valuable and the brother life not be valuable? It's a real massive imbalance between men and women. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think it's not even debatable. It's, it's yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so not that's disagreeing, why I'm that's, but so I'm that's asking why I'm you about male you. violence against so, women. No, but that's what I'm saying to you. It's not about male or female violence. It's violence in general. Must stop. That's the far right. Why do you think men struggle to hold each other accountable? Is it because they want to be one of the boys? I feel so, and I feel that we have a growing problem in our community where our men, for so long, have not held each other accountable. They're not each other's keeper. And so they might hear, say, boy, a man, check out your young thing, uh, he beats up his missus, and it's, boy, that's just the way it is. Nobody actually holds, holds a check and says, brother, should you really be behaving like that? So, do you think there's anything that could be done to stop men, you know, behaving a certain way? No, never. Georgia, I remember the days of black women. All the women used to look up to them. Beautiful dress, nice, properly. But now, what happened? Booty shots. Booty shots. What happened now? Booty shots. Oh. One in two women die at the hands of a partner or ex-partner per week in the UK. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And do, do you teach these things to your son? Um, well, my, I think my son's very clear about my feelings about that uh, and that, you know, violence of any sort, not just, you know, just against women. Yeah. Violence in period is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. I, want him to bring, I want to bring him up to be a great guy, right? And what kind of it's things? Respect. How, yeah, and how do you do that? We, we talk about the content of what he's watching, what he's listening to, and you know, we, we try to talk about his conversation, the narrative with kids at school. My son used to tell me how bad he would feel because in, in amongst his friends group, the way they talk about women, mm. but he couldn't say anything mm. because to say anything mm puts you then in another whole bracket mm -hmm. that you don't want to be in as a young guy. Mm -hmm. So you keep quiet. Most we're told is to keep it clean. You know, you're close, your clean. close your legs. Close your legs. You're watching something from morning. We're not actually told <laughs> that it belongs to us. Yeah, you can enjoy it with yeah, the right you can person. enjoy it with the right person. You have to keep it for your husband. You get a husband and he doesn't know what to do with it, you're finished. So actually, we have to have these more wider conversations with young people around all of that stuff. Like, you know, uh, what, make, what what attracts them, what turns them, all of those things. We can't not talk about them things there, because actually, it's fucking us up. So it's a real conversation. I love it, this, because the conversation we need to have as a community, 100%.